In this video, we provide the foundation for the calculation of work in a gas expansion. In prior videos, we have seen how there are two types of energy transfer, work and heat. Work is the useful one, because that's the one that you can use to uh, do useful things, like thinking, or perhaps moving cars, moving objects, and so forth. The key of work is that you have to move against an opposing force. Alright, so in this video we're going to try to begin uh, to see a way to quantify that work, right? So how do we actually determine the amount of energy transfer as work that you're doing in a simple process, such as a, a gas expansion? Now we choose a gas expansion to illustrate work because it's a very convenient model and it's also useful in chemistry and the life sciences. Now there are many types of work that we could think about, for example, uh, the fact that I'm lifting this object against gravity that is actually doing some, I'm doing some muscular work to be able to do that. However, the calculation of that work would be extremely difficult to carry out at this level. Okay? Uh, another type of work would be thinking. Right? So when I'm thinking, uh, I'm pushing ions against gradients in my brain. And that is actually work because you're moving against an opposing force. Uh, much as with muscular work, that type of, of uh, a work of, uh, or motion of ions against gradients would be very difficult to calculate. Right, so to, to have a convenient model that is easy to calculate, we focus again on gas expansions. So let's actually talk a little bit about uh, the generalities of gas expansions before we start to see how to calculate work in them. Okay, so for a gas expansion, what you're generally going to have is a gas contained uh, in some sort of container like this one, uh, where we're generally choosing a cylinder, this will be the cross section of that cylinder, uh, with a movable piston that can go up and down depending on whether the gas is expanding or compressing. So here you will have your gas, and the idea is that this gas has some pressure that we call capital P, or sometimes we call it P internal, uh, just to signify that it's the pressure of a gas. And uh, uh, outside that container, you have an external pressure. And this can have various contributions. For one, uh, if you're open to an atmosphere, then the molecules of the atmosphere will be pushing this piston down. Okay, uh, for another one, if you have here some weights uh, that you can put in there, then you have also some gravitational force uh, 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 you know, contributing to that uh, external pressure. Now, if uh, those pressures are identical, the external pressure and the uh, internal pressure are identical, then you're in a situation of mechanical equilibrium and that piston doesn't move. However, if the internal pressure is greater than the external pressure, that's when you get an expansion. Okay, so what will happen is that uh, if that's the case, then you can move against this opposing force. Okay, so that is what we call a gas expansion. All right, so now let's try to see how we can quantify this gas expansion. All right, so uh, we know that the de definition of work is equal to force times distance. Okay, so uh, in this particular case, notice that distance is very easy to measure because it's just uh, uh, the difference in height of that piston. Okay, so that will be what we call delta H, change in height. Okay, so we can change this distance to simply uh, H. Now, uh, something that is very useful in physical chemistry is to actually work with differential expressions that we can then generalize to integrated expressions according to, according to the case. Uh, so what we're going to do is actually handle this expression in differential form, and we're going to see later on uh, how simple that differential expression becomes when you apply it to specific cases that we will take the time to discuss. Okay, so in differential form, what this means is the following. Uh, the change in work here is going to be equal to the force uh, times the change in distance. And again, this will be changes that are very small. This is a differential form. Of course, you are seeing that there's a difference in the notation uh, in this differential of height that we have right here and this differential of work that we have right there. Uh, that is not a typo, that is intentional, and that is just to signify that these two variables are different. Okay, uh, We have said before that work is path-dependent. That means that the value of work 
depends on how the process is carried out. Okay, so when you have these path dependent variables, then we use this uh, delta um, uh, to signify that it's a path dependent variable. Now, height is actually not a path dependent variable, right? So it turns out that it really doesn't matter how do you do the expansion. The difference in height, to calculate the difference in height, the only thing that you need to know is what is the final height and the initial uh, height. Again, how have you taken that distance from the low height to the high height? Really doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is the initial uh, a a value and the final value. So then height is not a path uh, dependent variable and then we just use the differential as a normal uh, low case thing. Okay, great. So uh, from then on, uh, from now on, we're actually going to try to flesh out this expression and see if we can, again, uh, come up with a simple solution to calculate work in a gas expansion. All right, so now we have to, height is very easy to measure, so, so that is not a problem. Now we have to uh, handle that force. Now, uh, it would be very easy if we actually can cast that force as a function of the external pressure, because the external pressure is something that we can control very well. If we put this up into the atmosphere, then that will simply be an atmospheric pressure, right? Or we can put here some gravity, some uh, masses, some weights, and, and that will add a little bit to the external pressure, which again, we can control very easily. Okay, so let's see if we can put this force as a function of that external pressure. We actually can do that because we know that uh, pressure is equal to force over area. Okay, so it will be the external force, right? So that means that force is equal to the external pressure multiplied uh, by the area. So we take that definition uh, of force and uh, take it to the work expression, and what we get is something like this. The work that you're doing is going to be simply equal to the external pressure multiplied by the area multiplied by differential of height. Okay? But of course, if we uh, stop to think about this for a little bit, here you have area times change in height. So what that is going to be is simply the change in volume. And again, that's something very useful because measuring uh, the change in volume in cylinders is very easy. Right? That will be simply the change in volume of the gas that has uh, elicited this gas expansion. So this simply turns into something that uh, looks very simple. That is going to be P external differential of V. Okay? All right, so uh, this is your uh, parent expression, but there's a problem with it, and that is the sign. Okay, notice that in this case, uh, the gas is actually pushing out the piston. That means that the gas is losing some of its energy in order to be able to uh, uh, transfer that energy as work into the surroundings. Okay, so what we get out of this should actually have a negative sign, uh, uh, considering the sign criterion that we have established in, in a prior video. Okay, but uh, all the elements are positive, however, right? So the external pressure, that is going to be positive, like one atmosphere or maybe two atmospheres and so forth. And the change in volume is also positive because the volume is growing. Okay, so, so in order to actually preserve our sign convention, what we have to do is simply change the sign. And again, this change in sign is simply to accommodate for the sign convention that we're doing. We're saying that when the gas is expanding, it loses energy, right? It's doing work on the surroundings. And that's that from the point of view of the system, then that is a negative work. Okay, so that is our parent expression that we can now integrate, right? So the integration of this is going to be straightforward, right? Notice that work in your gas expansion, which is the integral of the differential of work, is simply going to be equal to the minus integral of the differential of the external pressure multiplied of the integral of uh, external pressure multiplied by differential of V evaluated from the initial volume to the final volume, which we can call V1, V2. Okay, so this is going to be a root expression to calculate uh, work in a gas expansion. Now you have an integral right there, and uh, that should not be intimidating. As we're gonna see in, next, in the next videos, uh, this expression turns into very simple uh, equations depending on how you're doing uh, uh, the, the process, right? Our first application is going to be to use this uh, in the simplest case, where you actually have that you're uh, pushing against a constant external pressure. When this pressure is constant, then the equation that uh, comes out of this uh, integration is straightforward 
and its application is direct as well. And we're going to see that in the next video.